Okay, so now we've finished the cleaning step and we're going to move directly into our ligation. And to do our ligation, there's a couple things that we're going to need to do. First of all, we need to go back to our cloning uh, box here. And normally we would be taking, for the ligase reaction, you have T4 DNA ligase. So that's going to be our enzyme that we're going to add. We'll put that back in to keep it cold. And then there is the ligase buffer. Now the ligase buffer itself has ATP in it. And the problem with ATP is it's somewhat sensitive to hydrolysis. And one of the things that makes it hydrolyzed is uh, a lot of freeze thaw. And so if we were to take this sample and use it for all of you, one person would thaw it, another freeze it, thaw it, freeze it, and that would be bad for the ATP. So instead what we're gonna do is aliquot, your teacher will aliquot, <coughs> the ligation buffer into these smaller tubes and it only takes about one microliter and so when you come in you're going to find these smaller test tubes it's going to have an L on top of it and that stands for the ligation buffer and then in the bottom you'll almost not even be able to see it but there's going to be a one microliter drop like less than a drop of ligation buffer and so you'll just take this tube and make your ligation reaction right in this tube so I'm going to set it here we only need, we've got the ligation buffer in there, we only need really three other components for our ligation, and that's going to be clean PCR product, clean plasmid, and then adding our enzyme. So, the recipe is in your manual, so I'm not going to go over that. I've got my one microliter of ligation reaction. I need three microliters of my clean PQE31 vector. And so I'm going to pull up three microliters. And I'm just getting the clean PCR uh, and clean vector out of the Bio 377 cloning box will be back in the freezer and this is where people will be putting their PCR and vector uh, products after they've cleaned them. Now again I'm going to insert the pipette tip all the way to the bottom of the tube and now I need six microliters of PCR it's been restricted so I'm going to pull that up, pull out six microliters, I'm going to insert that in there. And so you can see at the bottom of that tube, 10 microliters is not very much. It's only coming up to about, about there is the level of the, of the fluid inside there. And for the last part, I need just half a microliter, so very small. So the back room is where we store our ice buckets that are usually located here on top of the refrigerator. It doesn't really matter, you can get the fancy fabricated ones or just a styrofoam box of work. And I'm going to come in here and grab some ice. bucket. We've got our ligation reaction. I'm just going to set it right on there and snuggle it down in the ice a little bit. And we're done. I'll let this now sit for anywhere from about 10 to 16 hours. That's usually about overnight. So if I set this up about 5 o'clock, I'll come pick it up about 8 o'clock in the morning. When I get done with the ligation, I can take my reaction and put it back in the cloning box. I'll make sure I want to label it with my station number. So again, I'm section 2-1. The L that's already on there tells me, and the size of the tube tells me that it is a ligation reaction. So I can take this when I'm done and put it back in the box and wait until I'm ready to do my transformation. So you can, after ligation, freeze it and it'll be just fine. Uh, the next step after ligation that we'll be going over is the transformation.